Today's video will not be one of my highest viewed, most viral videos ever, but gosh dang it, it'll be one of the most important for a handful of people, and that is what difference does an exhaust housing make on a turbo? So for those of you 10 people out there that are deciding between exhaust housings, this video will be your saving grace. We're going to be comparing the 1.28 AR exhaust housing to the 1.44 tuba shaped exhaust housing for the 4202. It's a lot of letters and numbers, but what's important is to see is bigger, better. Are, are we going to lose response or gain horsepower? We're going to see what's going to happen specifically related to back pressure. As most of you know, you never see me clean shaven. My electric razor is annoying to use, and I'd probably have better results using the business end of a turbocharger. So when Dollar Shave Club reached out to me, I was half tempted to try their product. For a limited time, Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their daily essential starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set features their executive razor and three trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In your first box, you will receive their shave butter, body wash, and one wipes Charlie's butt wipes. You will also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This offer is exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com slash robdom. That is dollarshaveclub.com slash robdom. I have not been clean shave in probably 10 years. I feel smooth though. I feel real smooth. There she is. This is the biggest exhaust housing made for a GTX 42 platform. It's, of course, a T4 housing, but it's divided. So it is a 1.44, but it's also still got more material to try and make it more responsive on a twin scroll turbo. Right now I have the 4202 on the car, but hidden beneath the PTP turbo blanket is the 1.28 exhaust housing. They're very difficult to tell apart, like right off the bat, but of course the stamping on the side of the housing, the casting, makes it pretty clear. Many of you know I'm a massive fan of management by measurement, and this is exactly that case. What you see here is the red line, which is boost, with the green line being back pressure. Comparing the two, you can see that almost at the entire time, the back pressure is a higher PSI than my boost pressure. Let's look at it right here. Right at that point, it's 18 PSI and 13.8. So give or take about four PSI. That's on the street, that's third gear. Right here is fourth gear. Such a bummer to take apart a turbo that's perfectly fine on an engine that's perfectly fine for the most part, but this is the life of both a rotary owner and a YouTuber. Time to get to work. Taking off the downpipe, the turbo blanket, well, I wish that was it, as well as this clamp, which was a pain in the ass to get on there, and then hopefully keep the coolant lines and the oil lines in place so that way I can just kind of pick the whole center housing up to take off the back. We'll see how crazy or complex this might get. You guys gotta check this out. Well, look at this. That's a brand new exhaust housing. Short of a couple runs. Man, it rusted pretty quick. Look at that. That's mounted nice and tight to each other. No exhaust leaks for once in the history of this car's life. The V band doesn't even want to come off. There you go. There we go. There you are. I didn't think I would see this moment until after nightfall, but I did finally get the housing loose. It's got one bolt wedged right over there, so I gotta deal with that. So I'm gonna set the camera down, because I need two hands. I am not about to hit this housing against this precious little blade assembly right there. That bolt is off, and here we go. You son of a pup. You are out of the car now. I hate you so much, you're a pain in the ass, but there we go. There is the 1.28. It looks so weird, I don't know what all the rust is from. I'm not used to having new parts, so I don't, <laughs> everything's always rusted to begin with. Here we are. 
quite frankly, they look almost identical from this point of view. Any camera angles kind of messes with you a little bit. If you guys can see it, let me know. But really, honest, I'm being honest, you don't really notice a massive difference. 1.28, 1.44. This one's going in as is. This one still has the divided housing in there, but not right there. Abel got it to that point and uh, didn't finish it. He felt that wasn't necessary. But we're going to see if, if what he says is correct, these two should flow identically. But if he, what he says is wrong, we should see a considerable difference in back pressure when we install this. It's the easiest way to tell that this is bigger. It's uh, touching the side of the car. Easy enough. Expansion and contraction can be one hell of a thing, and in this case, it's really screwed me over because the center rotating assembly clasp, the one that holds it onto the exhaust housing, yep, just decided to destroy itself while being taken off. I'm not talking about putting tons of pressure. I'm talking about literally just unscrewing it. It binds up, and then, of course, it snaps. So I've got metal filings everywhere, and I'm no further. Check this out. Can't see them right now, but there's metal filings all over that thing. It's completely stripped. Thank God for Abel, because I'm clearly not able to figure out solutions on my own. He cut the tip off with a bandsaw. We're going to see if I can get it that close and thread it in. Who knows? It might work. It might not work. But at least those are clean threads, and I've got hope to finishing this tonight. After trimming it, look at how close it is to not giving me any threads, just to thread it on just a little bit, please, dear God. Not even going to lie to you guys, I jerry-rigged it to make it work. I took the exhaust V-band housing off of this one, put it on the CHRA housing assembly, took my old exhaust housing V-band and put it on my new exhaust V-band. It looks horrible, but this is what you got to do to make a video like this happen. That's the look of a desperate and broken man who has a 1.44 housing installed. I am going to save you. I could have monetized this video on 10 minutes of me swearing up and down a storm after all of my V-bands broke. Two of them broke at the same time. Aside from the temperature being a little bit warmer at night than it was the last run and not having a turbo blanket on, everything else is the exact same, even the tune. We're going to let it warm up and then take it on the street and log what happens. All right, let's get in and fire this beast up. Oh, fuck. Ah. This is my luck today. Please tell me that battery is not dead. Brand new battery. If anything's gonna charge it, it's gonna be this thing. I just bought this battery, like, whatever, a week ago? A week and a half ago? And it's already dead. That's how much parasitic drain this car has. being stolen that's that's perfect i don't have the outside keys only the main door key great Take a look at the results. Here we are. This is the original 1.28 older housing at 6,500 RPM. We have 16 and a half pounds of boost with 18 PSI back pressure. And boom. Almost the exact same amount of boost, but two pounds less of back pressure. The results are pretty impressive that it does make a considerable difference in back pressure. The crazy part about this, it's hard to tell with the graphs on a video like this, but the actual lag or the boost response was not affected whatsoever. The, the response was identical. You can see that the green and the red lines are so much closer on the 1.44 housing than they are on the 1.28. There's a distinct difference. Is it worth $600 plus shipping to have two PSI back pressure difference? Yes, if this is your final setup. If your goal is to just rock out what you've got, your cool turbo, you love it, you're happy with all the machine work, and you just want to perfect it a little bit more, then something like this is worth it. Like I said, the turbine back pressure is still so high that it is clear that this turbo is too small for the car and the power levels I'm aiming for. 
2 PSI difference of back pressure means 2 PSI more, I can turn the boost up, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to take it back on the dyno, increase the wastegate duty cycle so I can get another 2 pounds of boost pressure, and see if it makes much of a difference on the dyno. 